What is up heroes, this is Midnight Zero and welcome back to Let's Play Corpse Party Sweet Sachigo's Hysteric Birthday Bash Blind. In the last episode, Yoshiki and along with a couple of the other men were rather upset by the harem situation of the play and decided that they would rather take on some sort of challenge Sachigo is prepared to try to escape uh, rather than participate. So, Yoshiki being, well, Yoshiki, he has decided that he's gonna go for it and he's first up. So, and with that, he flung open the door and ran through it to whatever horrors awaited on the other side. Let's see what he's gonna find. Unsurprisingly, it looks like Heavenly Host. What? Unfortunately for him, a pit trap opened at his feet only moments after he crossed the threshold. And since he was running, he stood no chance of avoiding it. Almost as soon as he began, down he went into the depths. <laughs> <laughs> Who the heck puts a pit trap right at the start? <laughs> Thanks, Kurosaki's voice actor. <laughs> oh my goodness, <laughs> Shimada, didn't anyone ever teach you that jumping the gun is cheating? Yikes. Is he dead? P probably Wasn't there supposed to be no risk of dying this time? Sachiko was probably going to be like, if you played along with what I su like suggest. No mercy for those who oppose Sachiko, it would seem. But even if we don't oppose her, once the special service day ends, we'll be back in our previous reality, where death is practically a given. Kurosaki, Kurosaki, don't tell me you plan on participating as well. I can understand the rationale at least. Well, if the only alternative is to wait out the day and go back to that hell from before, then this is really our only chance, right? You have a point, but you saw what happened to Shimada. You're better off passing on Kizami's life. The more people that escape now means the fewer people I can kill later. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with Kurosaki. I feel like the chance to save not only ourselves but other people as well won't come around again. You feel? I'm surprised. You've never been one to act on gut instinct, Fukuroi. I'm surprised too, but there's just something about this place. It's like if we stay here too long, we're going to suffer a really miserable fate. I mean, I can guarantee that. Whereas, if we all make it through this challenge, we'll be able to save everyone from Byakudan. Aside from Shimada. So you're telling me to participate as well now? If you do, Kizami, and we all make it, that'll be six people we've saved. Yes, but it's far too dangerous. We don't know what other traps are set beyond simple pitfalls. Oh, did I, I just realized, did I mix up Yoshiki and Shimada? Shimada's the guy with the red hair who's a total jerk. <laughs> I think I did, that's uh, my bad. You're right, we don't know what to expect at all. In fact, still, if I make it through, I can rescue Mitsuki. Kurosaki turned to look at Mitsuki, hoping to indicate his intentions with the stern, determined look on his face. Mitsuki, however, completely misinterpreted his gaze. <laughs> Kurosaki's right. There's too much at stake not to take on this challenge. So if Kizami won't go, then I will. <laughs> oh man, Kurosaki's gonna be like, wait, no, that's not what I wanted at all. <laughs> 
やる気のないキザミ君より私の方がよっぽど役に立つと思わない What's with the dumbfounded looks, you two? Kizami obviously doesn't want to do this, so I'm pretty sure it'll be a lot more helpful than he would be. Makes sense. I'm sure it's this sort of like. pride they have as men. <laughs> That's true. But then I don't get to save her if I make it through. You would be the more reliable ally to have on our side. That's. If、there's one thing I learned about Kizami from the other games, that's most certainly true. Come on, guys, you got a problem with me? Just come out and say it. <laughs> no, no problems here. I know I'd certainly feel better having you by my side in there, Mitsuki. Wouldn't you, Fukuroi? The way he said that makes it sound like a hey, hey, yeah, I'm totally trying to be reassuring. There's nothing wrong here. Yes, definitely. I can even see her stepping in to save us should things get particularly tense. That's more like it. Now, what do you say we all get going? Byakudan Senior High School, move out! Alright! Well. Mitsuki, does she even realize that without Shimada, there's no way to save everyone from Byakudan? Yes, finished! Huh? Nice, Ryosuke, huh? Urabe, what's everybody talking about? Wait, what? For some reason, Yoshikazu Yanagi Hori was now dragging a television into the auditorium? What for? This guy gives me the creeps. But not just because of his appearance. There's something deeper than that, too. I just can't put my finger on that. On what? Is there anything you can feel beyond the appearance? I, I'd be so shocked by the appearance, I wouldn't have any ability to perceive what's beyond that. There we go. Now, now anyone not participating can watch the race from right here. It's a race? <laughs> Pity we had someone rush ahead and get himself disqualified, though. Guess all the information I gathered on him was for naught. Interesting. So, are they maybe tailoring some of the traps, some of the challenges, or maybe even some of the events from today to the weaknesses or whatever it may be of the individual characters? Interesting. Also, do we know who Aiko is? Hmm? Naho, look, next to Sachiko, isn't that. Aiko Niwa, that information dealer who collects spirit items and won't shut up about all the money she plans to make. Did she perform the ritual too? Okay, so I don't think we've met her before. Now, now, now. Let's not say things we can't take back. <laughs> Why would I take it back? It's all true. You're an information dealer. You do collect spirit items, and you never shut up about making money. Potentially fair. I do not like the it's all true argument, because just because something is true doesn't mean it should be said. <laughs> Well, yes, I suppose you're right. But when you say them all in succession like that, it presents me in such a negative light. I sincerely doubt mentioning them all separately would make any difference. Alright, you have a point. But to address your last concern, namely, how I got here. It's because I called her here as a commentator. So Sachiko summoned her. She didn't even necessarily do the charm. What she said. 
Don't you what she said me? Do you have any idea what sort of place you've been summoned to? That's my line. You're the one who saw fit to enter a realm you know nothing about. And you even dragged Sayaka into your mess. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, you've got a point there. And before you ask, I've just been brought here on a temporary basis, so I can do nothing to rescue you. I don't know if that's necessarily logical, but... But I guess we've established that Aiko can't really help them. But I have been worried about you since you vanished. Hmm, have you now? <laughs> Giving the cold shoulder to someone who saved you from danger time and time again? A little appreciation would go a long way, you know. Ooh, there's some, so there's some interesting backstory here. Saved you from danger time and time again. <laughs> and I suppose you think I had no idea you were really just after some rare spirit item each time and only helped me when it suited your needs? Oh my. I was gonna say. Save the fighting for later, Aiko. What can you tell me about that Shimada guy who fell in the hole? What kind of person was he? Ah, that's right, she is an information dealer. Hmm, yes. I'd best take care of business. I have already been paid after all. <laughs> I knew it! You got spirit items for coming here, didn't you? I'm a professional, so I shan't dignify that. <laughs> shan't. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> dignify that with a response. Ahem, the boy who was disqualified was Shimada Kai. Ironically, his first name means pleasant. Byakudan <laughs> Senior High, Class 2-4, feared by much of the student body for his violent conduct, admired by fellow delinquents and a certain subset of girls. <laughs> hmm, so he was kind of a sad sack then. <laughs> Interesting phrase. <laughs> Most definitely, the rumor mill claims he had 10 girlfriends and told each of them, You're the only one for me, baby. <laughs> Ugh, what an awful person. On top of that, his trusty survival knife that he likes to show off, he apparently bought it through mail order, and it's not even a high-end product. I'm taking a stab at him, no pun intended, um, about how he bought a knife to appear tough, but didn't even go about acquiring that knife in a tough way, and it's not even a great knife, per se. Honestly. Freely outing someone's personal details like that? What kind of information dealer does something like that? Does she have no pride? <laughs> well, to be fair, he does sound like a danger to all women, so I'm willing to overlook it this once, at least. I suppose, if it prevents him from landing girlfriend number 11. Who are you, Inumaru? <laughs> Why are you so big on the screen? It makes me ashamed to be a part of the same gender as him. But my Sayaka would never fall for such underhanded charms. She's much too smart for that. <laughs> Where the heck did you come from, you stupid dog? That's actually really funny. Oh my goodness! Sure you can! <laughs> 
So I think part of the irony here, or part of the pun, I guess, with calling him a stupid dog is Inu means dog in Japanese, and his name is Inumaru, obviously. Um, but she obviously just sky uppercut him to oblivion. Inumaru doubled over in pain. Now, Sayaka, I know you were startled, but don't you think a sudden corkscrew to the solar plexus is overdoing it a bit? What, what is the terminology corkscrew and solar plexus? He got what he deserved. I mean, from con context, you can obviously figure it out, but I can't say I've ever heard those before. At least in that context. I know I'm not exactly one to talk, but I sometimes get the sense that you're a little overly hard on Inumaru. It's probably because Inumaru keeps hitting on her or claiming her as, you know, his Sayaka when she clearly doesn't appreciate such attention. Hey, he's the one who sticks to me like glue just because we grew up as neighbors and he romanticizes me as his childhood friend. The harder, the better. And he just showed up out of nowhere. He seriously skeeves me out now. I don't know. I think he's showing remarkable restraint, personally. He was probably beside himself with worrying with worry searching for you after you disappeared. No, Tan, don't say that. I don't want to even think about that creep running around, desperately calling my name. Sends shivers down my spine. Oh, come now, Sayaka. I would never do something so embarrassing. Though I would certainly go anywhere to find you, even into the depths of hell itself. <laughs> Speaking of, how in the heck did you get here in the first place? Anyone who hasn't played Blood Drive or read the manga will have no clue who you are. I love when, I actually really enjoy when games like kind of self-refer to, you know, break the fourth wall a little bit there. <laughs> what sort of set nonsense are you speaking, Sayaka? There's no one in this world who isn't fully aware that you and I are an item. We are not an item, which means obviously there is no one in this world who would know that. <laughs> Look at you blush. That's my Sayaka. Cute as a button. This, guys, is why he deserved an uppercut. <laughs> I'm not your Sayaka! This was immediately followed by another of Saiko's apparently famous corkscrews, exploding from her fist with almost superhuman vigor. And this one was aimed directly at Inumaru's nine tails, which were impacted so deeply as to be virtually flattened. What? Nine tails? Is that maybe like a reference to his butt? Wow, still standing. <laughs> Sayaka, you underestimate my adaptability. It's common knowledge that I, Inumaru, cannot be bested by the same attack twice. In what universe is that common knowledge? Besides, how am I supposed to trust in your mystical adaptability when you can't even accept the fact that I am not in any way interested in you? <laughs> Don't be absurd. If I haven't won your heart, then tell me who has. <laughs> Isn't it obvious? Nahotan, I've given my heart to Naho. Which is really cute, but also, she doesn't even necessarily need to have somebody else who she's given her heart to in order to say, I'm not giving it to you. I'm not so sure about that either. What? Nahotan, that's mean. 
That's beside the point anyway. Shouldn't you be focused on the main part of your question right now? Oh yeah, Inumaru, why are you here? <laughs> Simple, it's a miracle brought about by love. It was stupid of me to ask. Seriously, though, you didn't perform the Sachiko Ever After ritual to get here, I take it. That would be tough to do with no friends. <laughs> Not that that breaks you up anyway. You only have eyes for Sayaka, after all. Actually, speaking of random, random comings and goings, I get the feeling Taguchi, age 29, isn't around anymore either. Huh? Why, why the specification of age 29? Oh no, he is! I totally saw him not too long ago. Where was he? Don't remember exactly, but I can picture it in my head. He was all stumbling around with a video camera in one hand. I've lost the ability to read the air here. You worried? Maybe, but Sayaka, you mustn't chase after him, okay? It's dangerous. Okay. Sainoki-san, I'm not 100% sure on this, but I think I saw the guy you're talking about, Taguchi, speaking with Niwa. With Aiko? To be exact, it was both Sachiko and Niwa. I don't like the sound of that. Yeah, it sounds like they were almost like conspiring. <laughs> Stupid dog, Aiko aside, how could you see him talking with Sachiko and not stop him? If I had stopped him, would you have praised me? My Sayaka. Why the heck would I have done that? And for the last time, I am not your Sayaka. <laughs> <laughs> My Sayaka is such a shy little goose. <laughs> it's such interesting. Interesting phrases in the translation here. I just kind of brought people here who had some connection with our other guests, but I don't know very much about them. So, Aiko, what can you tell me about that pathetic boy? The quick and dirty explanation is, he's Sayaka's highly maligned pet dog. Okay, finally! So, we just got our little bit of a character introduction, which is helpful, but I am ready for some more substantive events to take place. And you guys can hear the music in the background got pretty intense. I did, at the suggestion of one of the comments, so thank you for that, um, decrease the background music volume in the setting, so it should be relatively quieter. Hopefully it's not too quiet, but... Anyways, Aiko is saying, oh, but it seems the race has begun while we were talking, and currently in the lead is... Seiko Shinohara! Seiko, hayai, hayai. Go Seiko, so fast! Shinohara Despite a delayed start to the race, Shinohara-san wasted no time jumping into the lead by way of her uncommonly fast speed. I had no idea she was athletic. It's almost like she can teleport! Are we gonna get any visuals? Check out how much I'm leading by, Naomi! Trip! Best of luck! <laughs> Show me your innards! Such interesting <laughs> phrases. <laughs> what horrifying spectators. But I can't let it get to me. <laughs> Seiko's so great. 
she's so great. Because deep in my heart burns the fire of my eternal love for Naomi. Fall into a pit. Tell me all you want. Only Naomi's cheers enter with these ears. And with that, Seiko sped up even more. Today, of all days, I need to put these legs to good use. I don't think they explained, though, that in this race there's any punishment for coming in last place. I thought the idea was just to clear the challenge. So there's not even necessarily a, I guess, a reward for doing particularly better than the other racers. Maybe it's implied due to the fact that it's called a race. Maybe I'm just forgetting the explanation, but I don't recall there being a specific reward for placing well. However, there's obviously a very big punishment for falling into one of the traps. I'm basically saying so to suggest maybe it's not best to go as fast as Seiko is going. Then I can leave this place together with Naomi. Huh? Seiko, did you say something? I said, I'm going to participate in this escape room challenge. That's not a good idea. You saw what happened to the red-haired boy, didn't you? Yeah, but I feel like if I keep standing around twiddling my thumbs, something much worse is going to happen to us. You can feel it too, Naomi, can't you? That something really, really horrible is going to happen to us in here. Yeah, I can't remember clearly what it is, but I feel like we've been reliving something really terrifying over and over in this place. <laughs> yep, definitely. Exactly. So just leave everything to me. But, Seiko... Yikes, that flashback though. What is it, Naomi? I keep seeing this vision of you... hanging. I know. Sorry, Seiko. It's probably nothing. Also, is this a, um... A new... Oops, that was the wrong button. I was gonna say, uh... Is this a new sprite for Naomi? I don't think we've seen this one before. No, it's something, alright. I think that's probably how I died here. That's the button. Um, I was gonna say, there's gotta be one key that I can press to get rid of the display. What? Then... Then, wouldn't that mean... Precisely my point. I have to reach that goal, no matter what. For me, you mean? Yeah, because you and I, Naomi, we're bosom buddies. I, s I swear she used the term for best friends, not bosom buddies. She knew. I think that I think that means like best friends, bosom buddies. That's all Naomi thinks we are anyway. Maybe they're trying to add a bit of like Seiko's quirkiness into the phrase best friends, and maybe that's how like Seiko in her quirkiness would refer to them. But to me though, we're so much more. <laughs> and I want us to leave this place together, still as bosomy and buddy buddy as ever. Seiko. <laughs> Though I'm sure you'd prefer being rescued by Mochida-kun, of course. That was a joke. Just a joke. And on that note, I, Shinohara Seiko, will now step forth and take part in Sachigo's escape room adventure. Seiko, just wait. Seiko, wait! Don't try to stop me, Naomi. I won't. Don't worry. Just hold up for one second. 
Naomi put her arms around Seiko and squeezed out one great big hug. All close up to the screen. <laughs> A sudden unexpected hug from Naomi? To display for all the world to see, even? Cut it out. This is just all the encouragement I can give. Sorry. And thank you, Naomi. Seiko, I won't try to stop you, but just promise me you'll make it to the goal safely. Promise? Fueled by her promise to Naomi, Seiko accelerates. My body is as light as a feather. I've never felt such euphoria. I no longer have anything to fear. I will run with all my might for Naomi. <laughs> because now I know I'm not alone. The power of friendship. I'm just waiting for because, of course, this is Corpse Party, right? There's going to be some sort of tragedy that strikes Seiko. Aren't you now? You may be nothing more than a clown. A jester. Jester! Okay, Gauls are a jester a few times. Hmm, there's a hole in the floor here. Too big to cross. Did I take a wrong turn somewhere? Is it more like a labyrinth? Or a dash of some sort? Oh wait, I think that door is unlocked. It's a trap! It's a trap! Seiko cautiously inched her way toward the door, then trepidatiously reached out a hand and pushed it open. Trepidatiously? The, the vocabulary... The diction, rather, is pretty, um, interesting. What is up with this? Vast quantities of... bread? It's a bread-eating challenge. Seiko Onei-chan. Oh, I see now. We each run down the hallway and undergo a different challenge in a different classroom. Unfortunately for you... This is my specialty, so I'm afraid I'm going to make short work of your best laid plans. Oh boy, the question is, are they like moldy or gross? Is she gonna get sick or something like that? That's all I can imagine. Naomi worriedly watched Seiko strike a gallant pose via the closed circuit television in the auditorium. This is actually pretty cool. I like how they show the television screen, and um, we finally get to see Seiko's sprite, despite all the talking she's been doing. A bad premonition began creeping over her, but she tried her best to ignore it, instead focusing all her energy on positive thoughts and encouragement. I'm trying to think, if we like look in the background, I mean, the bread is obviously hanging, so maybe that's some sort of reference to Seiko's original death, but I don't know. Good luck, Seiko. Obviously, there's going to be some sort of plot twist. And given that Sachiko has had information exchange with this information dealer slash collector, I wouldn't be surprised if Sachiko was already aware that Seiko was in indeed specialized in bread eating. And as a result, there's going to be some twist to this challenge that makes it particularly excruciating for somebody who would excel in bread eating. I love the confident, gallant pose she's striking as she's making all these, like, fighting sounds for, well, eating bread. Seiko sure is giving it her all, but remember what I said, this is a bread-eating challenge. Huh? Bread-eating, as in... Naomi turned to Sachiko, suddenly realizing what she was up to. Guess you figured it out. But Seiko can't hear you anymore. Bread eating. There's, the, I mean, obviously here's the twist, right? 
I can't think of it, though. I turned down the volume to that room. Not bad, huh? Oh, Sachiko, that's just too cruel. What did Naomi figure out? Hmm. I don't know. Seiko, no! Maybe... Maybe the intent is... The challenge is to not eat any of the bread. And that's why it's challenging for Seiko. Hmm. No, should chew it. Only one more to go, I think is what she's trying to say at the end there. Oh, and you can see... They're actually disappearing in the background. That's actually pretty funny. Finishing move! Last lick finale! Seiko. Stay quiet and silently root for her, or something feels off. Try to stop her. Um. I think we'll try to stop her. It may be too late already, honestly, but. I feel like we're gonna try to stop her. Oh, did it automatically quick save in the corner? That's pretty neat. That would actually be very much appreciated. Seiko, don't eat that bread! Naomi? It almost seemed as though Seiko could sense Naomi's feelings for a moment. And in that moment, she happened to notice a jumping motion with her peripheral vision. What is that? <laughs> it's a bread monster? What? Bread eating challenge. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> There's bread attacking me. Does that mean this is the Dawn of the Bread? Is that Dawn of the Dead reference? That's really funny. God, what the heck am I saying? Seiko began running around, dodging the bread monster. I heard Nami's voice. I know I did. She was worried about me. It was so clear. Now he saved me. She really saved me. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, the flash of red. We know something bad just happened. Huh? No. no. Oh no. It's either the bread-eating monster got her by surprise, or the bread she's already eaten is already bread monsters within her. But regardless, Spirit B now is saying Splash Zone, which is not very, uh, good. Yeehaw! Drip. Drop. Drip. Drop. Uh-oh. If I'd known this is what was going to happen, I would have stopped you. I would have done whatever it took to stop you. So it sounds like it's probably either way Seiko is going to end up dying. We still don't really know how she died. I think the implication is that the bread eating, or the eating bread, or the bread ate her, I guess. <laughs> um, I would be curious to see what would be considered a clear of this challenge. Would it be to just leave the room? Would it be to kill the bread monster? I'm not sure. I'm so sorry, Seiko. If only I'd actually listened to my gut. If only I trusted myself. And of course, in typical Corpse Party fashion, Seiko is one of the first to die. Nakashima-san, this isn't your fault. No. It is my fault. I did nothing to save her, even though I knew this is how things were going to turn out. This is all my fault. Seiko, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. And so again, Seiko meets another sad fate right at the beginning of the game. Why is it that always my... It's like my favorite characters. I always end up going very quickly. 
中島さん<笑>いいえあなたのせいじゃないわ中島さん No, this, this really isn't your fault 教師である私がもっと用心してみんなを守ってあげられなかったから As your teacher, I must take responsibility for not doing a better job of protecting you all はっサチコファクトを解除するの忘れてた Oh crap, I forgot to rescind the rule governing this place Huh? <laughs> Which means Seiko's fated to die, no matter what. Yikes. So she was planning on rescinding the rule so that people would not die even if they experienced death, as in like they could maybe come back or whatever it may be. Oh my, Sachiko, how careless of you. <laughs> This goes well beyond carelessness. Pass the bread eating challenges in ordinary hallway? No way that's all there is to it. I agree with your skepticism, Kurosaki, but I'm really curious as to like what the end goal is, right? So, is it that. There's a hallway, they run, they go through this race, and then there's at some point a diversion that forces them to go into a individual, specific, like, tailored challenge for them. Because Seiko couldn't advance because of the big hole in the hallway. And then went in the classroom, which had the bread-eating challenge, which is basically like her death room. But even then, could she have left the room and just been on the other side of the hole? Or, or what was there to it that could have allowed her to progress? Maybe I'm, you know, being optimistic and assuming there even was a way to progress or even a way to complete this challenge. Um, Sachiko may have just not even designed such a thing, and this is just a death trap no matter what. But, yeah, is it now that that room is closed off and Kurosaki can progress through that hallway? If so, that would support the idea that Sachiko has truly just made this a... I guess, opportunity appearing challenge that is in fact just a death trap tailored to each individual participating. I'm not really sure, but I guess we'll get a better idea for that when we see what Kurosaki does in his own challenge, or what's past the bread eating challenge and what he encounters in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It was pretty good. Um, the Inumaru introduction was interesting, to say the least, but I'm glad we finally get to got to some more interesting things. Uh, I mean, Seiko's a great character, so I always enjoy hanging out with Seiko, but we got to see a little bit more of what these challenges look like, and we got a, a I guess, human eating bread that supposedly killed Seiko, so that's pretty interesting. Definitely caught me by surprise, and I guess... I mean, I can't even predict what's gonna happen next. We, I would have never in a million years predicted a piece of bread, a bread monster eating Seiko. So, I'm excited to hear what, or to see what happens next. And I hope you guys are too. But until the next episode, this is Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete. <laughs>